Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. A couple of travel notes before we begin this video. Saturday, October 22nd, I will be at Jacksonville Public Library for their Comic and Zine Festival. And the end of the month, we will be at Baltimore Comic Con, October 28th through the 30th. Come out and say hello. That's a great comic book show. And you can find Ed in November 25th through the 27th with Jeff Darrow at Tokyo Comic Con. It is Kayfabe-tober. We are in the midst of these drawing prompts. Some really great stuff showing up in our uh, social media feeds. You can find this whole list in our Instagram and Twitter. And uh, if you do some participate, please uh, tag us so that we can share some of these great drawings. It's been very fun watching the uh, talented cartoonist Kayfabe audience uh, posting these drawings. We are working cartoonist, and that's how we pay to make these videos on Cartoonist Kayfabe. So support us by picking up our books, Ed Piscor's Red Room, Antisocial Network and Red Room Trigger Warnings are both out now. These are both self-contained. So whichever volume you run into first, that's the one to start with. And you can get those anywhere right now while supplies last. My latest is Hulk Grand Design Monster Madness. Two issues available in comic shops now. And in early 2023, the Hulk Grand Design Treasury Edition will be out. So pre-order that one now. Let them know how many copies they should print. And Street Angel Deadly Scroll Live, after a year out of print, is back on the shelves from Image Comics. Eight complete full-color stories, so add that to your Christmas list right now. Today's comic, we are going to look at the Hulk Pit crossover by Peter David, longtime Hulk writer, and Del Keown. The uh, perfect companion for Hulk Grand Design... Maybe yeah. not. We'll see. <laughs> um, Del Keown was my Hulk artist. So, yeah. you know, at the time of this, is 1997, whenever this book comes out, um, a good artist for me in terms of association with the Hulk. And, of course, Pitt was his image book. Uh, comes out at the end of the first year of Image Comics. A lot of delays on that book, but about 20 issues published in all. And it's funny because at this point, you don't see an image eye on here, Pitt breaks away from Image at some point and is self-published or published under Full Bleed Studios by Del Keown. But this is how they were doing these crossovers, right? Whenever you would have X Force and Young Blood, you'd have Rob Liefeld involved. If you're going to have Hulk and Pitt, got to bring Del Keown in. And uh, it's kind of a good team, you know. It's a good creative team for what looks like a uh, a fun crossover. Two monsters fighting. Page one, panel one. Peter David cutting promos already. Have you ever met someone and taken an instant dislike to them? And that's over top of the pit head? Yes. <laughs> also, I almost was f fucking fully checked out on page one. Because how, how do you read this? How, are, how am I supposed to read this? Like, if, if you want me to read this, then I feel like I need to go here and end here. But you don't because the ellipsis here c continues on the next page. So I think it's this, this, and then you can read that whenever you want. Or not at all. <laughs> like what what does this even mean reality? Yeah, and I like Chris Elopolis, but like I think um you know the, these guys maybe they the penciler had the panel placement or something, but it doesn't there's no flow to it. And and I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck this comic, man. Um Dan Panosian is inking. So this is not Del Keown doing all of the artwork himself. Um and and I make note of that because like Overall, I'm, there's a lot of disappointment for me in this book. It's true. And you can already see it, like, in a way with the color, yeah. I think, on this spread. It's you can kind of see, like, this background. Yeah, the paper. Even the lettering. That reality check title. Not very good. Uh, some ideas. Like, like just having this kind of setup, dude. Uh, like, that. that's... I'm, I'm on board. But it, this is a regression of Dale Keown's art back to the days of Aerosol, in a certain way, man. Like, uh, with a lot of... The cartooning here he's not putting in like he he reached a certain level of hatching and double lighting before this period and and he's never hit it again you know it, it, that actually makes me feel good because i would look at his double light yeah. and just marvel at it uh -huh. and you know what this tells me it's really hard to do uh -huh. it takes time so that's good there's no easy secret to it the thing is what panosian does with the inks he really flattens out uh the the forms a lot and that's something that um keon wouldn't do on his own he he would maintain volume and allow for the 3d of the characters but like that's very very flat and then this is that shit that just made all the old timers so fucking upset about the 90s artists of using the same textures on rocks and flesh very well said it's a great example of it and 
this should work. You know what I mean? Like I was looking at this all week because I was mostly disappointed in, in revisiting this. Yeah, pretty bad. And it's like, this is what I want in a crossover. I want these characters to fight. And here we go, man. You know, a couple pages in and that's all we're getting. They're using like bones and, and you know, from a, I don't know, a mammoth or something. I don't know where you get a bone this size. Right. But Probably. clubbing each other with them. And yet something feels a little bit hollow. I'm imagining something like this. Uh, the the draw is Del Kion, and I'm imagining that there's a lot of like Marvel method here. Uh, so so Peter David is the also ran. Whether he's been the writer for like who cares about like you know okay good you were the writer for a million years whatever. Um, he's the also ran, so he's got to try to make sense of this with wording, and his jokey joke shit it it doesn't cut it it, it, it it's it's tone deaf to the art. You know, it's a it's a level of corny on top of this, right? Because like Del Kion's like playing for serious right there, dude. <laughs> and and with the dialogue and captions, it's cornball shit. It's not metal. Yeah. And what about the colors on your blood? Yeah. Like like do something more. Not, I think one of them even has different colored blood. Yeah, I like think, Pitt's, Pitt's a green guy, right? B green blood. I, I think so. Some uh, other color. Yeah, it's almost like Marvel editorial, like. Don't don't make it too red. Brown is the least part though. Like I think of wrestling magazine covers of my youth, and it's like that red mask. is how you sell this stuff. Like this should be such a violent thing, and with the bright poppy orange and yellows, I don't know. It's uh, it's odd. And then, what the heck was that? Somebody yeah, was exactly. dreaming that. Yeah. I have no idea what we just saw. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, and it doesn't. It, yeah. It doesn't. Neither Del Kio nor Peter David read that Alan Moore book on making comics in the transition part that we talk about because it's 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 full stop it's cold and you enter here it's only after you read the whole thing that you kind of understand what you just saw and then i got really mad at this scene because talk about dropping the ball yeah, yeah. pittsdale university go pit i've heard a lot of go pit in my life yeah make it pittsburgh come on it's right in front of you it's a real place and we could have those pit signs and then i'd feel very good would it Maybe been one or two points higher on my scale. Right. <laughs> I thought that this drawing is very good. The back of the head, it feels like uh, it's, it's a good kid. It is a pretty good kid. Yeah, I agree. Reading Rick Jones's um, autobiography, his memoir, Sidekick, doing all the Hulk stuff, the Sidekick book was, an, was one of the ideas I had for Grand Design as a way to... Uh, you know, have your through line through like a whole story. And it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, that Rick Jones part. I'm glad to see that worked in there. That makes sense. Probably not too far off timing wise either that this would be in here. It might've been a, a, a little bit earlier in Hulk continuity that this book came out and there's storylines that go with that. Uh, but pretty fun to see that in here. <laughs> I like to think of Hulk being able to hide behind a tree. Like whenever he's stalking somebody, just this big green fucking oaf. Yes, and apparently in, in like in daylight too. Yeah, exactly. By the way, <laughs> but he's there to uh, help out this kid who's having some kind of problems. At least that's I think the plan. Yeah, little Timmy. I don't know what's going on with this drawing, but I like this art. That feels kind of interesting. It's like a distorted pit thing. Yeah, the way. Uh, so maybe his like some kind of psychic thing, but just from a drawing standpoint. Sure. Um, almost feels like something you would do on a photocopier, although I don't think this was, mm -mm. but it has that kind of like weird distortion. And I, I like that. I love whenever somebody does a drawing thing that feels a little different. Yeah, yeah. Using maybe maybe a French curve and keeping up with it. But like little Timmy's some kind of like a psychic. He's like Billy Moomy in that Twilight Zone episode. And, he, and he's putting these guys in different realities, uh, I think is what's what the deal is. You know, to be uh, to play devil's advocate for poor Peter David... I like Pitt, mostly looking at it. Man, I can't tell you what that story is. No. So it's it's pretty... Uh, and you got the run, he right? Heavy lifting. I do have it. Yeah. And it's, um, I can't tell you what any of the story is from sure. that, that series either. Sure. But we do have this lady painting pictures of Pitt. <laughs> like, what is going on? Yeah, yeah. And, and right here, the boy is is taking command of her. So, so like, okay, this this is effectively what we're doing right now. This is my second reading. So now, like, I see... I know who she is from later, and I see that she's established here. But it's, like, so inelegant. Like, it's unmemorable as you're reading it the first time where you're just like, what, huh? 
as things go down. And I love this trope of like the artist painting something and then that painting coming to life. Sure. Although I've seen it done a little better by uh, a certain uh, Wally Wood. Great, I ep- great episode of uh, Tales from from the Crypt, the TV show with uh, Harry Anderson from Night Court uh, playing like a Jack Kamen type character. It's a very good, my favorite episode because you see drawing in uh, on TV. Yeah, it's really bizarre. Like just a disjointed story and this is in that wave whenever they're doing crossovers marvel and i think it's an attempt to just like sell anything yeah try, sure. try to get any numbers you know like 97 pretty bleak on the uh, on the sales uh scale I and so see, i see what peter david's trying to do also to just like try to get some kind of story in there so like little timmy is 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 pitt's pitt's you know human counterpart rick jones makes sense like try to get them together to like to like come up with some MacGuffin to get our dudes to pounce. But call me simple. I would have just liked 30 pages of dudes pounding. Yeah. They're both orphans. Yeah. So he's, he, Timmy thinks his mom's coming and, and Rick is trying to explain like, that's Dude, your mom ain't coming, bro. Not, not the way it works. <laughs> the coloring is funny because what time of day is this? <laughs> right. Just bright green. You know that the concept ought to be is that the Hulk glows a little bit because of his irradiation. That's cool. And then you could get away with this. But I, I don't think that's true. I don't. I, I didn't come across that anywhere. This all, like, he's so good at being doing the big muscle stuff. But there are, we're going to see some where he takes it, pushes it to a point of cartoony that's so far out. But, like, that, you know, he, he, the, the French braid musculature stuff, he's showing off a little bit right there he knows he knows what he's doing yeah he was very good at drawing the giant dudes which you know he knew enough to, to do that whenever it was time to create his uh his image book and see when he's singing like this would be way different but that's very dashed he's one of those guys that that he will shit out the boring panels so that he could spend a lot of time drawing the fun one yes but you pointed out the cross hatching that's the same on a leg as it is on a rock and I think this whole book suffers from that. Sure. Because, like, you see the, the it's not cross hatching, but those parallel lines for your back muscles are exactly the same as, I don't know, the sky twilight or something like that. And you're going to see a real bad you one. You lose something with that. I think probably even on the next page is this one. Uh, because it's really like, it's, it's, it's speed lines, but like, we've seen enough of it that I'm like, holy fuck, Panosian, like, flatten this out so bad. But that's not what it's supposed to be. But it's on him, so it look, so it reads that way. Yeah, right. It's supposed to be this uh, the car being crushed together. Yeah. Or ripped apart or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, look at that span right there, dude. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it just feels fast. Yeah, yeah, and totally kayfabe in the bottom parts of that, that, those back muscles. Because, like, nobody ever really remembers how, how to draw those back muscles, so you always kind of, like, get the two, three, like, big, big pieces, and then you kind of futz around with, like, all the little ones, and the, this is just, that's just not too good of a, it looks like celery stalks. And is it weird that the light source is, like, the lower part of his back? Right. Yeah, dude, you're selling a, the, the monster. So this is like uh, with the tire stuff, or did he already turn it to a ball? Because because it's it's Chekhov's car mangle ball is established early because it, it it plays a part in the end. And by the way, as Rick is trying to explain the fantasy of uh, Timmy's folks showing back up, here comes his mom through the door. Okay, yeah, here we go with the bowling ball. All right. So now we do have, we are trying to get these pieces together, right? We've got Pitt kind of on one side of this campus fighting towards Timmy and Hulk, I guess, following Rick Jones around and the SWAT team somewhere in the middle with monsters loose on campus. Even I the, like it. That seems all right. Yeah. Even the, the way he draws Pitt isn't the way he always would. Like the mouth is like, there's room for a nose there. And that's not the best, like that's not Pitt. That's almost a nose. It is. Those are almost two nostrils. And I I know enough of Keown's work to know what Keown at at his best, how he would draw this. And it wouldn't be that simple. It's just... I Is this like one of the last of his comics? You know, he had a bad schedule. So I don't know what the deal was. Like, if he just wasn't interested in drawing comics, but every now and then would, would put one out, or what the deal was. But... Definitely does not look as cared for as his Hulk run or the early issues of Pitt. Yeah. You know, there's something about the the blandness and the color of the backgrounds, too, that just... Totally. It just doesn't land. Yeah. So, like, this ball... 
was a car. In. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's that's part of the story because because there, there was actually like a beat that made me smile and laugh. Is it whenever uh, Hulk's making jokes about? Did someone say spare? So car bitch make, <laughs> making bowling jokes. Fucking fucking P- <laughs> Peter David can't help himself, man. Yeah, this is a tough. I think this is a tough one for anybody. How about that for uh, your coloring choices? <laughs> I mean, maybe, you know, you do it once to see, oh, man, that could be cool. And then you see it in print and you're like, okay, I'll just never do that again. Now, if this is the second, third, fourth time that the colorist did that, shame on them. But if it's if it's the first time, like, you got to give it a shot and see. It feels like so much of this is, is experimental in terms of, like, a new digital tool. Yeah. A lot of this coloring is stuff that you're just not going to see for very long. It's Steve Buccioletto who, like, we've sung his praises. Yeah. I uh, wonder, um, I was looking I, I, for, like, some no digital, steps. yeah, somebody that's translating this stuff. But... So, he, so he might be full Photoshop himself. Because, yeah, it, it, there's weird, mis- like, that red is so saturated compared to everything. Like, if you see this from a distance, that red stands out in a way that is unnecessary you know like a flannel shirt is not the focal point nor subject matter of the page this is the hulk and pit like fighting the forest i guess yeah 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 Yeah. like that would work great in um live action like from like a drone shot where you just see cornfield right the unstoppable force meets the immovable object kind of thing yeah it doesn't feel like a lot of references being used on uh on this comic. That's always been Keon. Like, he's never, like... he He's always figured out ways to kind of escape drawing very many backgrounds. This is a weird bit, too, and it confuses me. I guess overall this whole comic kind of confuses me, but Hulk is seeing his mother. Right. In, in the uh, guise of Timmy's mother. And they just took that, like, one chick that we saw painting pit drawings before, and I don't know who she is, because I don't know that we've seen her... Stat- she's just, like, his... Little Timmy's caretaker or something. But nevertheless, Hulk is now motivated by visions of his uh, deceased mother. And now they're running through the forest at each other, busting down trees. And there's some yellow coming from the from the sky at night. So I don't know if these are like fingers of God reaching through the forest sky. <laughs> this is a weird book. And I guess this would be your big money shot, right? Oh, a two-page dude. spread of Hulk and, and Pitt facing off. And in case you weren't sure, this is the equivalent of like whenever a movie's title is uh, uttered by movie characters yeah. in the movie, where it's like, yep, black out that forest and let's make it a cover. That's another sign of... Uh, so that's the same a, image. a quick turnaround. Same, same image, same right? Uh, it's the same image. You it? can count the lines on the fingernails. That's funny, man. Yeah, that's corny. Um I Especially because it's not a great image. No, like if it, I've seen covers that are an image from inside that kind of work. It's really good image, but meh. I bet I bet Keon got uh, five figures for that spread, though. Yeah, maybe. It just doesn't feel like anybody's hearts in this. Go away, or I'll hurt you. Yeah. Try. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like. Peter David cast and checks, man. K. Fibbers, what's a great Peter David comic? Because like uh, we'll we'll look at it one day, you know. Like what's what's his masterpiece? Does he do the X Factor that um, is on that short list or on like the top hundred Marvel comics? Quesada draws it. Yeah. I think Peter David is the writer on that. Yeah, book. It, it, I yeah. have that point I, somewhere. I, yeah, I have it. I have it also. <laughs> this is a good move. Wrap Hulk's neck up in chains and, and launch him into orbit. More of those motion lines that are confusing if they're on the flesh. But that feels like in the past you would have like color in your speed lines. Sure. To uh, to kind of accentuate that that he's flying it's through the air. Very bold lines too. Like like they they're bolder than the line art of the characters, so it stands out a little too much. And there's your, uh, this ball is coming back into play, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Chekhov's car ball. Yeah, yeah, it starts there. Like, and it actually, that this sequence was funny to me as I was reading it. Like, I like I actually did a laugh. I love the concept of, like, they balled up that car and now he's going to throw it and hit him in the gut with it. That's pretty good stuff, but it just feels flat. Also, by the way, I don't know if we got there yet or if it's coming, but there's another train that gets derailed. 
And there's a lot of fucking derailed trains in these comics that, like, Hulk, you know, saves little Timmy, but... Like, a train just fully crashed, and there's got to be at least three dead people in there. But they're just like, there's a crash train, and they're just handling, oh, Timmy, you're good, cool, let's get out of here. And there's, you know, paralyzed dudes inside the, that locomotive who are probably in a, like, you know, sleeping. And now Pitt lands in the middle of a uh, football game. Yeah, but see, Del Keon is Canadian, so, like, they play hockey up there, man, because these school <laughs> posts are about the 20-yard line. Yes. <laughs> Canadian rules football. Yeah, yeah, he's down with Doug Flutie. He ate the Flutie flakes. How about this for Marvel Method stuff? The Hulk pauses a moment to see if his earlier blows had any effect on his opponent. What, what are we talking about? Yeah, just just filling space. This hesitation is a mistake, and the answer is self-evident. Just filling space, dude. Like... This almost feels like uh, the McFarlane version of, you know, like I drew a bunch of pages and then laid them down on the floor to put them in order. Like, it feels like these pages could even be out of order. <laughs> <laughs> and see, like now we are at full, like this is the last couple pages, right? So like we were at the full regression back to Air Cell, Dragon Ring, Del Keon. <clears throat> You're artwork. insulting the Air Cell. I have some of those books. <laughs> and this panel is an insult to those. <laughs> like this kind of stuff. Um, and does he just like impale Pitt with, with the um, uprights? Ooh, here's coming. Your your train is on its way. Yeah, dude. And even that's lazy. This is the whole train track. Gimmick. This should have been a better panel, but Pitt headbutting Hulk. I do like that move. Yeah. <laughs> Hitting each other with cool posts. This could be a Three Stooges comic. <laughs> Niagara Falls! <laughs> Here we go. Now see, there's innocent people in there that are just trying to move coal and maybe some cars from one town to another. Maybe your FedEx packages. But, you know, Hulk is going to save the little blonde dude. And here's another... I, I don't understand this choice. He might have been able to get get the boy clear of the track. Instead, he chooses the means that will cause more damage. You're right. Like, what's he doing causing more damage? So Hulk is choosing to what? People die when trains derail. Oh, yeah. And, of course, you have to have the moment of, like, you saved Timmy. Thank you. The Mega Powers handshake moment. Hulk's not having any part of that. Totally. But just totally not paying attention to the train. Like, the, like this... It's, and, it's a drone train. Once again, man, we're back to the, the Pittsburgh campus next to the Natural History Museum. Oh, no, I mean Pittsdale yeah. Museum. Would have been perfect. Would have worked in, in Pittsburgh. That Natural History Museum is right on the edge of campus. And there's dinosaurs. Yes. <laughs> I love great. them. I visit them a couple times a year. <laughs> I sponsored a Stegosaurus backbone once. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so... If you wonder why uh, things were tanking in the late 90s in comics, I don't think it's just because distributors went under. Yeah, I think you can lay that blame on a lot of places, man. It wasn't the best quality of comics coming out at yeah, that time. Yeah, well, it wasn't, man. And a lot of it does come down to money because the, as the generations sort of continue, you have your guys who become the A-listers of, of their era – and then they price themselves out and they go to Hollywood and they do storyboards or design work and stuff like that. And at this era, a lot of those studio guys for Extreme or Wildstorm, they like they're fresh into comics and they're making nine hundred dollars a page. You know, Jeff Matsuda making nine hundred dollars a page can draw three pages in a day. And Rob said that that the dude bought a sports car and an apartment within a month. Uh, then that goes away. Um, what is the incentive to stay in comics? And and you see Jeff Matsuda's name on, you know, um, Teen Titans cartoons and shit. They leave, you know. So so a lot of the people who of that era are like the big talents. They price themselves out because they can make better money, like being you know J. Scott Campbell just drawing covers and and getting his own variant covers and selling them for a premium. It's 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 a weird thing. So it's like we did the Dave Cooper interview. And he was like, he, who was also in the air sale stable. 
And he said, when Dale did the image stuff, he was the first guy we knew who was like legitimately rich, had a full mansion. He was like, but we're kids and he had no furniture, you know, but he bought the big house. So the dude doesn't really need to be making comics. Uh, so presumably he could do the comics he wants. And if this is the one you want, then, uh, you know, good for you. Yeah. This ends with Rick Jones saying, I, I haven't been this confused since I took the <laughs> philosophy class years ago. And uh, I feel like that really sums up my experience reading this. And, and I think that's another uh, example of uh, Peter David cutting, cut, Peter David's cutting promos in here. I think you're right From about that. From panel one, when he said, you ever meet somebody you dislike and, it, and that captions over top a pit? We see this image three times. We in, do. In this, in this On book. the inside covers. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really slapped together. I, I would love to hear the creative people involved in this book talk about it, frankly. Because it just feels like it was either thrown together quickly or... Yeah, let's make some... <laughs> artist and writer maybe weren't getting along. I, I don't know the circumstances, but it feels like it just doesn't fit very well. Yeah, it is an interesting thing because Peter David is like so vocal about anti-image and, and all those guys like would draw him as like a goofist character and debate him or name withheld yeah. editorialism. Uh, so th so this was a, a surprise when it even happened, but I was, I'm assuming you got this like quarter bin shit. Cause like I was out yeah, of this I didn't, stuff. I didn't buy this at the time. Yeah. I would be so out of this, like completely checked out, you know, putting together my eight ball and love and rockets collections. Well, there you have it. Hulk and Pitt. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had to cover it one time, man. You, you good to go? <laughs> yes. Hey, favorites, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, tell the people what's out there. Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Live, back in print from Image Comics. Eight complete full-color stories of the homeless ninja on a skateboard. Hulk, Grand Design, Monster Madness, retelling of the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk, including quite a bit of Dale Keown and, and certainly Peter David, a big imprint on this Madness volume. The collected edition of that in oversized treasury format will be out in early 2023. Need to pre-order that one now if you want to make sure Marvel prints a copy for you. And you can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see a lot more of my comics and art. Red Room Trigger Warnings, Red Room the Anti-Social Network. These trade paperbacks are in stores right now. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Each of these books is completely self-contained, collects four issues of Red Room comics, and uh, each contains more than uh, 70 pages of extra content in the back of each, making them each uh, unique. Uh, you can hit up my Patreon and support the comic and my work that way uh, because I'm serializing new stuff uh, there before it hits print. And for three bucks, you could get more than 300 pages worth of comics, like literally a, pe a penny a page. Uh, hit up my link tree in the description below. You could get to those destinations. Uh, what else do we have out there, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist KFAB channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way, Jim. Read more comics.